Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Earhart, and I am so excited that you're here to catch the weekly replay of my laid-back yet very inspiring conversations with other full-time professional artists. The purpose of this series is to show aspiring artists that it is completely possible to have a great career in the arts. And if you ever want to tune in and have your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests, then just check out the schedule over at facebook.com slash groups slash Artist Academy every Tuesday to catch us on live. I'll see you there. This episode is sponsored by the Artist Academy Advanced Membership, a program for artists who want to up-level their art game by taking it from a hobby or a side hustle to a full-time six-figure art business. With weekly trainings that include step-by-step proven art business techniques, plus painting tutorials from yours truly (laughs) and other guest artists who are masters in their field, you will be well-equipped to learn and grow into the highly skilled and highly profitable artist you know you're meant to be. I've figured out what it takes to build my own six-figure art business, and now my heart is set on teaching aspiring artists like you to do the same. It's not hard, but it does require your time and dedication. So if you're up for the challenge, go to advancedmember.com. That's advancedmember.com to learn more. This week's episode features colored pencil artist and new author, Sima Martin. Sima and I are a perfect subject match because we both emphasize in teaching the business side of art, the best side if you ask us. (laughs) We're on the same wavelength when it comes to art education and I was so excited she agreed to be a guest on this podcast. Sima is my ideal guest actually because she's both a great example of what an artist can become in a very short amount of time, and she's a great resource for artists who want to start an art business. She wrote and published a book herself, which you can pick up at semamartin.com if you're looking to profit from your art. And come on, aren't we all looking to do exactly that? (laughs) Sema is full of art business advice designed to help you make money at doing the thing you love. And I also want to point out really quick that Siva and I, we do the exact same thing in different ways. She has a pod, or I have a podcast and she has a book and we got together to promote each other. And I just wanted to say and emphasize that because there is enough room for everyone at the table, whether you're an artist or a coach or a photographer or any profession, actually. (laughs) What if you got together with someone in the same field as you, who offers a very similar product as you, and you promoted each other, like we're doing today. This is a little off topic for an intro, but I wanted to plant the seed of the idea in your mind to maybe, I don't know, you could go live with an artist that you know maybe this week. If someone likes your content, then they are likely going to resonate with a similar artist's content and vice versa. And by you getting together with them, it is doubling your reach. So just think about it. (laughs) And I hope you're ready to get schooled on how to start an art business with this week's episode with Sema Martin. Can you uh, introduce yourself a little bit and tell anybody who has may not have heard of you who you are and how you got into the arts? Yep, so I'm Sema Martin. I'm a colour pencil pet portrait artist specialising in like realistic work. Um, I've been a full-time artist for about three years now, going on four years in September, which is quite exciting. Um, so I haven't always been an artist. Like I've always loved art and drawing and like I've got childhood pictures of me like in a corner with a coloring book like coloring things in like I hated reading and writing and all that kind of stuff like I'd always be coloring and <laughs> coloring on everything I could find so um but yeah it wasn't until I was in school that you know you sort of get to that age when people are like okay so what do you want to do as a real career now like you have to pick a subject and pick a path and 
no one ever really says that art is one of those paths they're always like oh yeah you know you're really good at drawing but what do you really want to do like insinuating that art isn't the thing I should be choosing so um I was you know a bit thinking about like okay what else do I like so I really like space <laughs> um and I was fascinated by space and space travel and bit of a sci-fi nerd so okay I'll go do engineering and um so I studied uh aerospace engineering I got a master's in that and then I did a few years as a mechanical engineer and then I got bored of that and then I was like okay so what else do I want to do you know another big thing would be to work for NASA so I was like trying to find out how to work for NASA and as like um international person like not a U.S. citizen it's really hard to work for NASA so I was trying to find a way into there and I have stumbled upon the International Space University. I was like, oh my God, that sounds like the thing that's amazing for people who are interested in space. So I applied for there and I studied there for a year and I managed to get in and intern at NASA Ames Research Center for three months in California, which was amazing. I love California. I really want to go back and maybe like have an art gallery there. That would be really cool. Um, yeah, so I did that and that was all really exciting. And the thing about this course is that it taught you everything to do about the space industry. So you also learned like law and the business side of things. And then that's what sort of got me thinking about business a bit more. And you got to meet loads of startup companies that have like, they grouped together and did like satellite startups and things. And I was thinking, oh, okay, so maybe I could do a business in something. It seems really good. Um... But then I got a bit lost after that. I wasn't sure what to do anymore. And I, I was like waiting for my PhD to start. I applied to do a PhD. Um, and like I was struggling to figure out what I wanted and what would make me happy. And I started drawing again. And my friend asked me to draw a picture of her cat that had just recently passed away. And I was like, oh, OK, you know, I'd love to do this for you. And she offered to pay me, which is really nice. I'd never been paid for any artwork before. It was always like um drawing things for people's birthdays and for Christmas and stuff like that so I was like oh okay being paid for an artwork that sounds good um so I drew that and she was so happy with it like it was it was a really weird feeling like giving someone an artwork that they've commissioned and they're just so happy and it was really fulfilling and a really nice feeling I thought oh well, maybe this is something I can explore and do more so I posted the picture of this cat on Facebook and I got loads of response from people like all over the world, especially America, um, of p other people asking me to draw their cats. And I was like, oh my gosh, like who actually want me to do things for them for money. <laughs> so I was like, oh, maybe this could be an actual business. So the more I did it, um, the more commissions I got. And then my business sort of like grew from there and for about six months, I was trying to do my PhD and the commissions at the same time. But it got to a point where I was struggling to do both. Um, and I really had to choose, do I want to continue this engineering career that I've started? Or am I just going to completely start afresh and go for the art? And I decided to go for the art. <laughs> <laughs> Three years later, my business is still going, so that's good. <laughs> um, and now I just really want to inspire other artists to do the same and really make that leap because it can be quite scary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I bet. Oh, my gosh. And just to have so many years of education, if you have your master's, mm. and, and just to have so much background in that and then to be like, okay, well, <laughs> that's not really wasted because yeah. I'm sure you've learned a lot from yeah. know, going to school and just like getting like dedication towards your studies and all of that carries over into your art business. Mm, so it's definitely. not all wasted, but it's definitely just a huge turn. I mean, <laughs> yeah, <massive. laughs> yeah, but that's amazing. I love that. I mean, I mean everything's working out. <laughs> so it's mm. like, okay, and you're not bored yet of it as you did the other professor. <laughs> yeah. 
The oh thing about God. doing a business is that it's it's quite a lot to take on. So you you can't get bored because there isn't enough time to get bored. <laughs> exactly. I was just yeah. I was just saying that through quarantine. I'm like everybody's complaining that they're bored, but like there is yeah. always something for, that I could be doing that we could be doing, whether it's painting or doing something to our website or advertising in yeah. a new way or it's just there's I'm never bored. I'm always like okay, well there's a million things on my to do list. <laughs> Which one? Yeah. Do I Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I find that too. It's like I'm bored. Do you want to do a Skype session? It's like, no, I don't have time. I'm trying to do this thing. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm still working till like two a.m. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So, what was the tipping point? Would you say that made you go into the arts? Um, I think it was really like that choice between um. Like having, I had like a six month wait list at the time. And I was like, gosh, you know, six months of worth of people are waiting for me to do this artwork. And my PhD, I was struggling a bit with that because it was quite hard. Um, <laughs> and it's hard to do a PhD if you're not fully committed to it. And with my engineering, I've never been fully committed. Like I was committed enough to do it but it wasn't passionate about it. You know, when people like wake up in the morning and they just have to start work. I didn't feel like that with my engineering, but I felt like that with my art. So I was like, well, I'm really passionate about this subject and I want to do it. So it was really like, it was that feeling of, you know, let's just go into it and let's just take the leap, quit the en- quit the engineering and just go straight into the art. And I think as soon as I did that, I felt this massive relief. So it did feel like it was the right thing to do. I wasn't filled with dread after, so that's good. <laughs> oh, that's a yeah. really good, that's a really good point. Just like listening to like your body and how it how it reacts yeah. to certain things. Like, do you feel relief or do you feel stress? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh wow! So okay. I felt I felt a massive relief after. Yeah, that's that's great. Okay, um, so what makes up your typical workday? How many hours do you spend painting? Um, I probably spend maximum about nine hours a day drawing. Um, but I, I try and like get up quite early. Like when you're in your, when you're your own boss, you have to try and make your own timeline and be really disciplined about it. So you can't just like wake up at one and then stay in your PJs all day. Like you, you're not very, um, productive that way. So I try and like get up at eight and do a workout, you know, get those endorphins going um and then I like start drawing and do admin bits and bobs in the morning like answering comments or questions I've had like during the night um and then I start drawing and I try and draw and have regular breaks like lunch breaks and dinner breaks because sometimes you really get in the zone and you forget to like oh I haven't eaten in like four hours or drunk anything so you have to try and be quite disciplined about that um and then I normally spend my evenings doing admin work like working on my website or doing a blog post or talking to potential customers and stuff like that. And I try and end my day like around 10-ish to actually spend time with my husband. (laughs) Otherwise, but luckily he works at home as well. So we literally sit next together all day, every day. So it's not like I don't see him, but it's nice to spend one-on-one quality time in the evening. So just like catch up on our programs and things like that. So I do try and have like a healthy working day But then there are days when you're just like working and then suddenly it's 2 a.m. And you're like, oops, (laughs) I should probably go to bed now. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so I try and do a normal working day, but it's quite difficult. Oh, my gosh. So your husband works at home, too. That's exciting. Yeah, You guys have a pretty good system set up to where, you know, you can both do your own thing yet be together. Yeah, we've taken over the attic. So I have one half of the attic and he's got the other half. So my drawing board and everything takes up massive room. So I need half a room space full of stuff. And I've got like a packing station and then I've got my desk area. So I've got like the various zones that you sort of need for a business, you know, your office, your drawing, and then actually packing and distributing things. Um, Yeah, so we've got that set up, which is quite good. And then he's got his own stuff as well. 
That's so fun. Okay. Yeah, I can yeah. definitely relate to that because my husband sells insurance, but he can work yeah. from his phone. And so often mm-hmm. he'll be in the living room and I'll be in my little studio and we'll just kind of yeah. like meet for lunch <laughs> and sometimes yeah. like in the kitchen. <laughs> and I'll be like, okay, yeah, well, don't, don't bother me. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. going to work. Don't bother me anymore. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. It's quite so, nice. So you made this transition here recently um, to where, you know, you're drawing full time and then mm-hmm. you decided that you wanted to write a book. Can we, let's just dive into that really quick. And to, like, when yeah. did you make that transition to where, okay, I've got everything pretty much f- figured out in my own art business. Mm-hmm. Now I want to teach others. Yeah. So I was sort of like, I got to a point where I was getting regular commissions and, you know, that's going well, that's ticking over. I've sort of learned how to talk to customers, how to find my customers. You know, you sort of, you sort of get into a routine with that. And after three years of doing it, I I sort of got that down to a, a routine and a formula way of doing that. So I thought, okay, so what else and how can I take my career to the next level? Because, you know, I don't want to draw cats forever. I want to try and do more things. Um, so I was looking at other artists and other ones. I saw them doing like tutorials and like they're doing YouTube and Patreon and like teaching techniques. And I thought, oh, I'm not very good at teaching because I, I'm self-taught. So I don't really know like the technical things of how to describe stuff or how to say things. And because I've never been taught it myself, I, I wouldn't know where to start for teaching a specific way of doing things. Like I literally just, you give me the picture and I draw it done. <laughs> um, I wouldn't know how to explain it. So, but, okay, so what, what else can I do? And what can I do passionately enough to, um, to actually get some exposure for that? So I thought, okay, well, I, I really like the business side of things. And I get so many artists asking me questions about how they get commissions how can they start a business where can they find customers and I thought okay well instead of continually answering all these questions all the time and I did a few blog posts and that kind of thing I thought okay maybe I'll do a blog post on it and then that sort of evolved to oh maybe I'll do a small ebook on it and then I just kept thinking bigger and bigger I thought okay let's write a book (laughs) there's so many questions there's so many artists out there that want to know the same thing so I thought if I just put everything into one one space that would be like so valuable for anybody starting an art business, like what I would find valuable if I was going to start again, um, I just wanted to put all that information in one place. So I started writing my book in December. Uh, it's been it's been really hard writing a book alongside doing commissions. <laughs> like it's been. Quite a lot of long hours, but the book, I finished writing the book last month and then it was like a massive editing process and then getting it printed and all that kind of thing. So, yeah, I really, I really just wanted there to be the book. If you want to start an art business, you literally hand someone this book and they can do it and it would contain everything to do with this is how you plan a business. This is how you sort out your commission times. This is how you price your work. This is how you set up social media. This is how you use um, PR to get into journalists, to talk to journalists and get into magazines. Like, And then also I've got a chapter on how you would uh, develop as an artist to like, you know, go to YouTube and find tutorials on your specific techniques that you want to learn or join societies. Like there's loads of um, art societies out there, like the Colour Pencil Society and things that you can join. And that's sort of like a community of people that, Um, have similar interests but with that comes opportunities for like galleries and exposure and stuff Um, so I really wanted to help people just give them that boost and that confidence because I think a lot of uh, a lot of things that people struggle with is like fear of not knowing what to do so then they don't start it in the first place so I thought if I gave them the information to start then that would boost their confidence and make them feel like they know what they're doing that they could actually do it. So that was the sort of mission behind the book. I love it. I love everything about that because we, we have a very similar background in that way too. Mm. Like I, I love the business side of it, which was another reason I was so excited to talk to you because mm. <laughs> you get it. Like it's and yeah. I think a lot of people, a lot of artists don't maybe put two and two together that 
like they don't like the business side of it. But to mm. me and you, I'm sure too, it's like if you do the business side right, it's going to give you customers, which will give you, you know, yeah. like revenue, which will give you all the things. And so that's why I like the business side of it. And yeah. if, as soon as you know, then you know, you know, but like mm. if you don't understand the business side of it, it can be really frustrating. So I'm so excited that yeah. you wrote a book. Oh my gosh, that is yeah. no small feat, too. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. So <laughs> what what is it called? It's called How to Start an Art Business and then Art is My Career. So cross out hobby. <laughs> yeah, so art is not my hobby. Art is a career. Yeah. Yeah, art is my career. So it's a two hundred page hardback book. Oh, and wow. then I've also got an ebook available as well. Okay. Um, it's also all color coordinated. I remember my mum saying once how all of my revision notes were really beautiful and they're a work of art themselves. So I thought, okay, well, when I study, I like to co- color coordinate things because yeah. it sort of helps my memory of remembering stuff. I was like, oh, yeah, that was the orange section. You know, I can remember <laughs> that now. So I've color coordinated it, color coordinated every chapter. So like social media is the blue chapter and then all the diagrams are blue. And then it sort of helps you that way to be more visual when you're reading. Otherwise, it's very boring, blocky information if it's not split up um, and visualized a bit more. So that's sort of how I've. I've done the book. <laughs> I love that. You're adding a little bit yeah. of art element into yeah. the fundamental book. Okay. So yeah. let's just talk about the book writing process for a second. Did you have an yeah. outline of what you wanted to do and then you just kind of broke it down into sections? Yeah. So I sort of went through all the questions people would have been asking me over the years um, and I sort of like wrote those all down. And then I tried to segment those into chapters. So I had quite a few people asking me about social media. How do I get more followers? Um, Things like that. So I was like, okay, so social media, that could be a chapter on its own. I could talk about Facebook and Instagram because I rely heavily on social media to get customers. Um, I always get customers through Facebook, social media, um, and Instagram. Like they see my profile, then they go to my website and contact me through there, or they contact me directly through Instagram or Facebook so I think it's such an important thing to understand and especially like nowadays everyone is using social media so there's no reason why you shouldn't learn how to use it and the how part was a massive factor because there's all these algorithm algorithms and formulas and things that social media uses to get people engaged so I wanted to learn how to use that and then I could teach other people so I did a few courses on that um there's like Udemy you can do courses on things um so I did some paid courses on Udemy for things like Facebook and Instagram and email campaigns and because I wanted to learn it all for myself to make sure I was doing it right (laughs) before you start writing it down and telling everyone how to do it um Uh, yeah so I did that and I basically yeah continued going through all the questions that people would ask me like you know how do you find customers you know do I need a website what would I have on my website and I basically made all of those into chapters and then I just started going through each one and like um the introduction to my book and like the first two chapters is about my story and how I sort of decided to become an artist and how I decided to take on a business. Um, Because obviously businesses aren't for everyone, but it can be for everyone if you're disciplined and patient enough for it. So I was trying to think, okay, so what what in someone in um, my position, say three years ago, what would I tell them? What could they do? What were they fearing? I've got a chapter on like facing your fears as well. So like, what are the common fears like, you know, am I good enough to sell my art is a massive fear. So it's sort of like trying to help give people confidence to get through the book, basically, and to start their art business. Because, there's yeah, there's a lot of fears that people have initially. And I feel like that sort of stops them from starting in the first place. And it's fine to be afraid of something, but you shouldn't let it stop you. You sort of have to figure out, okay, how am I going to get over this fear to get what I really want to do? So that's sort of what my book takes you through. It takes you through the start. You know, I'm scared of doing this. I don't know how to do this. And then one by one, by the end of the book, you should know 
exactly how to start and how to develop as an artist and your business. I love it. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> and I always say like, there's no, there's no guide for this art career, yeah. but you actually made a guide basically. Yeah. Well, that's the thing because I, I just want someone to tell me how do I do it? Like there's, there's like various bits of information. Like if you Google how to do an art career, you find various blogs and articles with like snippets of information. And sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're vague. I hate things that are really vague. So if you type in how to get more followers, it's all really vague. Nothing really tells you actually how to do it. So it's like, all right, I'm going to make a book that tells you actually how to do it. If you follow each thing I say, you should actually do a really good business because I'm sort of proof of concept I've I've based it on my personal journey and I've based it on what I do so I've even done like little daily monthly and weekly tasks based on what I do every day and every week and every month so it's not like I've said loads of random things it's it's all proof of concept kind of thing like I this is what I do and you know you can do it too kind of thing <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And nobody's like art career and path is going to be exactly the same, you know, but you can <laughs> use yours and like, okay, this is a proven concept, you know, yeah. you, use what you want, you know, take what you want, take what you need, and then kind of spice it up in your own way too. And yeah. go for it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That that's exactly what the the artist academy is that I started. Like we like mm. every week we go through something, and I'm like, this is how yeah. I do it. But you can do it on your own, or you can choose not to do it. And that's exactly how your book. Yeah. Is. I love it. Are you gonna do a voiceover of your book? So like put it on Audible. I was thinking about it. Um, I I was sure like I personally don't like my voice, so I might get someone else to do it. <laughs> I don't think anybody <laughs> likes their voice. You know? Yeah, it's like, but then you'd have to listen to it for hours to edit it. It's like, could I go through that? Like, I'm not quite sure. I might do. It depends how high demand people want the audio version. I've had, I've sold a lot of ebook versions, which is good, and I've almost sold a hundred hard copies, which is really <gasps> exciting. Congrats! So, yeah, since last week. <laughs> so. I'll have to put in a new order soon. But yeah, um, I'm not sure about the audio yet, but I might I might do it if I have enough people asking me for it. Okay. Also, another yeah. question. Do you have a publisher or did you edit it all yourself and do it all yourself? I did it all myself. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Um, got my husband to edit it and my husband's dad to edit it as well because <laughs> oh. um, they're both quite good at, you know, English and editing. And I'm dyslexic, so... I can't see mistakes and things like, you know, the word here, I would write it as in here rather than like, you know, over here. So, and oh. I would think that's right because I can't see that, that it's a mistake. Um, yeah. So I needed other people to edit my book. And as a dyslexic, I, I literally never thought I'd write a book in a million years. Cause I, I hate even reading. Like, <laughs> Get me to sit down and read. No, I don't want to read it. I just want to look at pretty pictures and draw pretty pictures. Like I don't want to read anything. I just hate it. But I actually sit down and write the book. It was really difficult and it definitely, I don't know, the whole editing process kind of knocked my confidence a little bit when I was like, oh, no, there's another mistake and another mistake. It's like, oh, this doesn't make any sense. And so it took me quite a long time to edit through it, just trying to get through my dyslexia. So it's been a massive mission. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So... Okay, I, I'm just trying to think of this whole book editing process. You have me like, mm. you have my wheels turning. Like, what would I write a book of? And I'm like, I have no yeah. idea <laughs> right now. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I would just do like an audio book only because I would much rather yeah. talk <laughs> than, yeah. than read a book. But okay, awesome. Okay. So, um, where can you find your book? I guess we should just ask that too. Uh, like, how? Okay, yeah, so you, um, you said that you were ordering copies. So yes, yeah, so I get it printed. So I've I've been getting it printed like two hundred at a time. So um, where? Yeah, otherwise I can't on a printing website. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's just like you literally send them the PDF and they print it as a book. <laughs> oh wow, I love that. Yeah. Okay. So, so I designed easy. everything myself and I just forgive it 
to them as a PDF format and say, you know, I want a hardback, I want a matte finish, and then you just pay for it up front, and then they print it, and then they send it to you. Okay, and then so you're shipping it? Yes, I'm shipping it. Oh, that's so so cool. I'm a bit going to the post office, like, a big pile of books, like, every morning, like, here you go, here's some more. (laughs) Oh, that's so exciting, though. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so where where can people buy it? Do they go to your website, which is... Yeah, it's only available on my website at the moment. I'm going to look into getting it on Amazon, but right now it's just on my website, uh, semamartin.com. Um, and yeah, they can they can either buy the hardback for nineteen ninety nine or the ebook version, which is fourteen ninety nine, or they can have an ebook hardback combo, which is twenty four ninety nine. And all of them come with six downloadable documents. So I made up some documents to help people with their businesses. So I've got like a, a PR strategy document where they can document all of their ideas and article ideas. And then they can start listing journalists and magazines that they you know, want to be published in um, and contacts and things like that. And then I also made up a spreadsheet for commission wait lists. So they can start adding all their commission information and like, you know, their their customer contact details. Um, and that also comes with like, you know, when you're doing your taxes and stuff, you need to make sure you're documenting everything. they have got a whole section on making it legal because you need to make your business legal as well. Um, so I've got a whole section on that, on like documenting all your income and your outgoings and your expenses. And then I've got another uh, document on... Uh, an email pitch template so when you're pitching to a journalist this is sort of how you would say it and how you would arrange the email to sound really friendly and informative um yeah so and then a social media checklist template as well <laughs> okay so I've got some, they all comes with the books <laughs> oh my gosh so it's literally just like a a fun pack of like okay here's your yeah. ideas for you take it or leave it yeah it. <laughs> you can become an literally artist. It's like a starter pack kind of thing. And I've also got um, an exclusive Facebook group going. So people who buy the book can then join the Facebook group and then ask any questions that they want or need to know about. Um, And I also try to do like weekly challenges and things to get people motivated and to keep them motivated because it can be quite a lot of information all at once. And, you know, doing your own business and especially doing an art business can be kind of lonely when you're just sitting there by yourself. So I wanted to kind of create this group so people can just like sort of bounce ideas off each other and talk to each other. Like I have my husband to bounce ideas off, but not everybody has that. So I wanted to try and create um, a group where people can do that. Like, oh, I've got an idea for doing this. You know, what do you guys think? So yeah, just just a place where artists can really feel safe and feel like they can build a career out of it. And, you know, they're all helping each other do it. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah. I love that you're giving extended support too. It's not just, mm. you know, buy my book. Okay. See ya. It's like, okay, yeah. if you have a question, come to this group and, you know, yeah. you're with a community of artists who are going through the same thing yeah. and I'll help answer it for you. So it's, yeah, mm. you're very much committed to this. I love it. I love the detail in it too. And, and I oh, was thanks. thinking this could only come from someone who has a master's degree, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and because I just, I feel like yeah. The detailness that you have is that you had to have going through school and all of that, mm. and and in your very realistic <laughs> drawings, like this, all it all bleeds over into this book, and so yeah. I mean, you're not doing anything like halfway. It's like okay, no. this like this master's degree, this this drawing that is very detailed and in colored pencil, <laughs> and this book. It's yeah. all like this is everything I can do. I'm doing it to the best mm. of my ability, and. Here it is. I love that. I love that follow through that you have. And a lot oh, of thanks. artists, no problem. Yeah. And I just want to put that out there too, because I see it in myself too. Like I, it's very, very easy to start something and then just kind of like eh, veer off into a different direction or like, this isn't fun yeah. anymore. Like, you know, but I think you're a great <laughs> example of someone who just sees it through, does it right. And is now mm. seeing results from it. I mean, there's no yeah. coincidence that you're getting results in your art business because you are so thorough with it. Mm. So I just wanted to, you know, applaud you for that and also oh, use you as a great you. example to other people who are, you know, who like, you know, they start something and then they kind of get 
get like um, distracted and go off into something else. It's like, no, mm. look at what you're doing <laughs> and see it through. Yeah. And you'll also see results. So, yeah. And I think that's why um, parts of my book are so important because I do talk about setting goals and having short term goals and long term goals. And that really helps you stay motivated because, you know, even things like, okay, by the end of the day, I'm going to email so and so about getting a testimonial. And then that testimonial, you know, when they send it to you is another way to get a potential customer because you're showing off your work. You're showing, you know, look, this customer was really happy. They've got my work. This is what my work looks like in real life. You know, that would always, you know, help you get more customers. So I really wanted to give people the confidence to kind of set those goals and set those timelines and really think about what they can achieve and what they want to achieve as well, because not everybody knows. So sort of like the, the third chapter of my book is, you know, plan your business. Business. What do you actually want to achieve with your art career? Like really sit down and think about it, because if you don't know what you're doing, it's really hard to suss out if you're being successful or not, because you've got nothing to measure against. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah exactly just like figuring out first what you want because <laughs> mm. I mean a lot of people if you ask them hey what do you want and they're like um I don't know to be an artist it's like yeah but what like exactly do you want and a lot yeah. of people can't answer that yeah and I think the first that's why the first thing in my book is to answer it what do you want what are you trying to achieve because there's no point you know building the best Instagram post and email list and you know drawing every day if you don't know what you're trying to strive towards so yeah yeah, I wanted to really treat it like a real thing a real career (laughs) yes because it is it's a real career (laughs) yes let's see okay so let's just get on with some other questions now Um, okay (laughs) can you talk us through your drawing process are there any methods or techniques that you've picked up through your years of experience with creating these very realistic and detailed portraits animal portraits yes um yeah so I started off just doing color pencil um and then I found the pan pan pastels they're quite I guess they're relatively new they're like come in little find one they come in little pans like this and it's like really really um defined color like this really concentrated pastel it's just powder um so I found these I found another artist using these and I thought oh well, they look quite good so I, I bought some and I tried them out and I found that they're so good because colour pencil takes quite a long time. It's a tiny little area that you're doing and it's very time consuming. But I found this pan pastel, if I use it as a base layer to like block in all the colours and then I could draw over the top with my colour pencil and really get in those details. So I really liked using that technique and I use it all the time now. So I always have like the pan pastel behind and then I draw with my colour pencil over the top and then spray it all afterwards. Okay, awesome. So just a yeah. shortcut in that. Yeah, because yeah. I'm sure it does take a long time to do all of yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I can imagine. Like, I, I paint murals, so I'm using a giant brush, and mm. I, I just can't do it fast enough. I'm like, if it's, yeah. I just can't imagine using a tiny, tiny brush on a big canvas like you do, yeah. or, or even just a giant piece of paper. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bless your patience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you'd have to have a lot of patience for color pencil work I think I I always used to do oil painting when I was younger so I would have said I was a painter really rather than a color pencil artist this was kind of a way to a gateway to get back into art and then I've really fallen in love with it because it's quite easy to just start and it's not messy and then I'm terrible with washing brushes so I don't even like use paint anymore because <laughs> I never wash my brushes so colour pencil is just a really easy way to just start drawing and start art again. Um, but it also, because I use really high quality pencils, um, they are very um, bright and colourful as well. So you do, you can, if you get like wax pencils that I have, they do kind of have that oil painting effect to them. So they do look really high quality as well. Okay, what? So, ever, I'm sure everybody wants to know what brand of colored pencils are you using? Because I get that question a lot too, and I don't really use colored pencils, so I'm like, I don't know. 
Yeah, so I use I use two brands. Uh, I've got some here. So I use Faber Castle Poly Polychromos. They're um, an oil based. Are they oil based? Something like that. They're they're quite a hard pencil, so they're really good for fine detail. Um, and then I use the Karen Dash range. There's Karen Dash Luminance, which is a wax pencil. And the warmer this is, the easier it is to, to colour with. So I guess it's like a wax crayon, but obviously that's high quality. These are like £4 a pencil. They're so expensive. But <laughs> they're the best pencil ever. Like, I really, really love them. They're just so vibrant. Um, and so I normally use this as sort of like to add a base and to start building the layers. Because with colour pencil, if you want it to look realistic, it's like, you know, four or five layers on one section. So <laughs> I like to start... Yeah, I like to start with the Karen Dash Luminance and then I've got the Pablo's, Karen Dash Pablo pencils. Um, they're a harder pencil like the Polychromos, but um, they have different colour varieties. So they've got a lot more like browns and greys, which you'd use for like um, white animal fur and stuff. So I really like their colour range. Um, so I sort of use those for the fine detail as well. So I like I start with the Pan Pastel block in the colors then I use my my softer waxier pencil to start adding in the layers of color and then over the top the detail with the harder pencil and then just some white over the top sometimes like either with paint or you use an indent tool to like put in the whiskers and stuff first so you indent the paper and it leaves the yeah. space white and then you can colour in over the top and then that gap is still there because you've indented it. And then you can sometimes put like a white pencil over the top and there isn't because it's not overlapping a lot of layers of pencil. It still shows up really white. So huh. yeah. <laughs> I would have never even thought of that. Yeah, because that's that is working like almost backwards from doing acrylics because mm. we, we do like whites on the top. OK. So I've also heard of this one trick to where, like, if you do hair, you'll, like, indent it, kind of like you said, and then you'll do, like, yeah. over it. Is yeah, that I thing? do that only for whiskers, really. Um, so okay. cause you want the whiskers to be as bright as possible. Any whiskers or white hairs kind of thing. So I indent it, and then I start applying my layers of color over the top, and then it leaves the indented area, you know, sort of white. Um, but I would still draw white over the top to make it really pop. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, so that's just a whole area of expertise that I know nothing about, yeah. but I'm excited that you do it. So you can tell yeah. people about it. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll tell people. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. So have you thought about doing any like art tutorials on colored pencil stuff? Like, and like why, why do the business side first? Um, because I, I did, I've done like, I've got like two tutorials on my YouTube channel with like, you know, um, some writing about how I do it. And cause I do record everything I do. Um, and I like to have a time lapse going, but, uh, as I said before, I'm not really sure how to explain it. And I don't really know the names of techniques or the names of the way you do things. And it does require a lot of thought in terms of okay because I just sort of automatically do it now and I have to think okay so why am I doing that okay how did I choose that color and it is just a whole another mindset that I, I haven't quite tried out yet um and I was more passionate there's a lot of tutor um tutors out there there's like um amazing color pencil artists like Bonnie Snowden she does a lot of tutorials and she does um uh, Patreon colour pencil stuff and she does specifically colour pencil and there's also Kirsty Partridge she does incredible tutorials on Patreon and YouTube I actually started learning from her how to use colour pencils when I first started um, just her YouTube channel so I feel like there's already amazing artists out there doing it really really well but there wasn't enough people talking about the business side and how to actually make money about out of it because you know you can create the most beautiful painting in the world but if you don't know how to market yourself and if you don't know how to sell yourself as an artist you'll never make any money from it so i really wanted to approach that side of things and i thought i thought that was a gap that i could contribute to better than trying to 
you know, follow all these other people that are doing loads of amazing videos and uh, high def time lapses and things like that. I thought I could, I could just approach the business side because I think I'm better at that than trying to make a tutorial. Exactly. Yes. Take the road less traveled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, is there anything you don't like to create without? Um, probably my artist brush. <laughs> now oh. this is what you need. Okay. So when you're drawing, you start getting like loads of bit of pencil all over your paper and you don't want to use your hand to wipe it because it will smudge and it will go everywhere. And I keep white backgrounds and you need to keep the background, you know, as white as possible. So this is like amazing just to like swipe it. It's just such a, it's such a simple thing but you don't realize you need it until you start drawing with color pencil. Otherwise you just get little bits of pencil everywhere and it just dirties everything up. You get it all on your hands and your fingers and then you're trying to draw on white paper and the background starting to have like fingerprints everywhere. Yeah, you don't want that. It's really, really tidy just to swipe it away. You do a bit of coloring and then you swipe. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I definitely recommend getting this if you're doing color pencil drawings it's from Faber Castle uh okay. brush yeah <laughs> okay like just a wipe away just, brush I love yeah, that yeah exactly <laughs> it's really simple but it's so useful for keeping your work just immaculate okay great also how many times per painting do you think or per artwork do you think you brush away <laughs> It's like every five minutes. So, oh. <laughs> yeah, literally, oh, yeah. like, it's every five minutes. Like, because it's so automatic, I, I don't really count, but it's probably every five minutes I'm like brushing <laughs> stuff. Because you like, you do some lines and then you brush, and you do some more lines and then you brush. Because it's just all coming off. You know, like, yeah. With the pencil, the pigment, you don't want loads of excess pigment everywhere. You need to try and keep your area as clean as possible, especially if you're doing white backgrounds like you're leaving your background white which is a lot of what a lot of pet portrait artists do they just do the pet and they leave the background white um so that's that's mostly what I do and to keep it actually white um you just need to keep brushing and keeping your area clean so it's like every five minutes <laughs> oh my gosh I bet yeah. <laughs> okay well now we know because I tried some um butterfly colored pencils at the beginning of the year and it got everywhere because <laughs> I didn't know yeah. to do that it was just, I mean there were little yeah. smudges of yellow up top and down below oh, and no, my yeah. and I'm like I don't even know how people do this but that's how yeah. you do it good to know <laughs> yeah even a makeup brush like a really fat makeup brush any sort of like soft brush I like that one because it's just the Faber Castle bristles the bristles are quite good for getting off those waxy pigments that get stuck to your paper so it's quite good for that. But if you're not using like waxed colors, then just a makeup brush would do anything like that. Okay, great. Uh, Mar Mary yeah. Evelyn commented, she just says, love a good crisp white background. You guys should actually yeah. connect if you don't know each other yet. She she does a lot of uh, animal portrait colored pencils that are pretty okay. great as well. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, she says crazy pencils are their own crazy world. <laughs> <Are they laughs> yeah. color colored pencils. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, is there, let's see, are there any lessons you've learned the hard way? Uh, to do with my business or to do with art? <laughs> <laughs> um, either one. Um, probably with my business, I guess, working with customers. Um, it took a lot of getting used to how to talk to them, how to approach them, especially when they're, like, asking about pricing it took me a while to really get that system down. So now I have set prices. So if someone says, I want a picture of my dog, the first thing I say is, you know, have you seen my prices? Because it's sort of a way to sort of cut out the people who can't pay or they don't want to pay or because some people ask for free. It's like, no, I'm not drawing for free. <laughs> this is my job. Um, so it's sort of like a way to uh, let get, get the conversation going. So I, so I initially asked them, you know, have you seen my prices? These are my prices. What country are you from? And I get them chatting about their dog or their cat or whatever they've asked me about. Um, and I like to have set prices. So I know what they expect from me. So they're expecting NA4 dog. Here's an example. That's the price. 
and then they and then I know what to expect from them so they're going to send me a picture of a dog that's going to fit this size and it's sort of like that communication of to make sure that they know what to expect and I know what to expect and we're both being really clear with each other in terms of what we're trying to achieve um, at the end of the commission. So it took me it took me a while to understand that relationship between customer and artist. Um, so I've said that in my book, how to set up that relationship yourself um, and how to really, because it is about building relationships really with commissioned work because you're trying to get to know the person and the thing they're commissioning um, and really understand what they want from you and you always give examples so they understand what you're capable of because you know some people are like oh can you draw this dog but lying down instead of sitting up and with this and with that it's like okay well I don't know what your dog looks like in that position unless you send me a picture of it because you know I, ca I can't imagine things like that um so I always get people to send me multiple reference pictures if they do want a lot of changes um and also like being really realistic with people as well. So if they say, oh, can you complete it by next week? If you really can't, then tell them. Like don't just lie to them and be like, oh yeah, sure. And then it gets to next week and you're like, oh, sorry, I still can't do it because that starts, you know, that in their mind, you know, you haven't delivered what you promised and that can be really harmful to your business. So being really, really realistic with your time scales is another thing I learned. Um, so now I make sure that I always complete my portraits ahead of time. Um, I've never had a, an issue so far <laughs> with any customers being like, oh, you forgot about me or, you know, you haven't done this on time. Like, it's always, you know, I've, I've done it for you. It's in the post. You'll get it a week ahead of when you wanted it. So it keeps them happy. And then they're more likely to repeat because I get a lot of repeating customers. So you're more likely to have a repeating customer if you're always making sure that they're happy with your work and they're happy with the entire service, not just your picture. So that's been a massive thing I've learned through my business. Very good. Good. Everything yeah. about this is just like gold because a lot of people are like, <laughs> how, like, or a lot of people will come to me and they'll be like, well, as soon as I mention price, nobody responds. And mm. it's like, well, I mean, you probably don't want to paint for them anyway. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, that's what I always say. I say, like, they're not your customer. If they don't want to pay for it, that's fine. There are plenty of people in the world that are going to be able to afford you and that are wanting your artwork. So don't get worried about the people that don't because that's fine. They've asked. They don't want it. It's like going into a shop. Not everyone that goes into a shop is going to buy one item. So you just have to sort of filter out those people that aren't going to be your customer and be strong about your prices and be really committed to them as well. Because I, I had some comments recently, people being worried that, oh, maybe they should lower their prices because they're not getting enough commissions. I was like, no, no, never lower your prices. Like you have to be really committed to your work and, your, and confident about your work. Because if you start doubting yourself, you can't expect a potential customer to buy work if you're not happy with it because they they can sense the self-doubt it's really easy to sense if you're saying oh you know it's this much but maybe I'll do it for this much or you know that sort of self-doubt makes the customer start haggling with you you don't want them to do that you want to be really assertive and be like no this is how much it is if you'd like it fine you know I'm happy to do that for you you can pay I don't know, a deposit. I make people pay up front just to make sure that I'm paid for my artwork. Um, so there's various types of paying, but you just have to be really specific and be really confident with it. Like don't start lowering your prices just because you're not getting enough commissions in. It just means that you need to show yourself to more people and build the awareness. I love that. Yes, I think, and I think somebody, a lot of people I'm sure are in a position to where they needed to hear that. So mm -hmm. I'm really glad that you just said that right out and don't, <laughs> you know, devalue your work and somebody will yeah. pay for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Okay. Awesome. Well, we have about five minutes left on here and okay. the, li- the live will automatically kick us off. So we okay. have well, one more last question. Is there any advice okay. that you would give to artists who want to make art their full-time career, but just don't know where to start? Like where's a good starting point other than, well, I guess buy your book. That would actually be <laughs> yeah. a very good start. That point. would be a really good starting point. <laughs> yeah. So buy my book if you want to start <laughs> an art career, because it tells you everything. Like there's nothing that I can say now that isn't in my book. I've spent months writing this book to give everyone the information they need to start. So it's in my book, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and also have confidence in it. Like, it can be really scary at the start to, to not be unsure if you're good enough to start selling your work. But as soon as you start gaining that confidence, be like, you know, yeah, I am good enough. And yeah, people do like my work. That sort of builds on itself. And just keep that going. And don't get scared of not making sales. You just use the time you're not making sales to advertise more, to to build more awareness of yourself rather than lowering prices and things like that. Very good. Awesome. Well, I think this is just so valuable for someone to start their week off with hearing this interview. I think you're (laughs) just so full of art business knowledge and it's such an important aspect of being of an art career. And so I'm so glad you came on to share and I really hope everybody having me. Yeah, no problem. And I hope everybody on here goes and buys your book because if they're, they're listening to this podcast, because they want to know how to, you know, build their art career and they want to be inspired. Yeah. And so buying your book is a really good Yeah, way on to my start website. That. <laughs> yes, on your website, which is yeah. art, art by Sema Martin, or is it just? No, just semamartin.com. Sema so Martin. Links in my bio. Okay, awesome. And I'll put it yeah. in the link mm-hmm. for the, the podcast as well. And then this all episode right. will come out exactly a week from today. And I'll send you an email about all the things. Great. So yeah, okay. Well, again, it was Exciting. so nice to meet you. <laughs> yes, you so lovely to meet you here. too. Thank you for having me. <laughs> no problem. I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. 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 This episode is sponsored by the Artist Academy Advanced membership a program for artists who want to up level their art game by taking it from a hobby or a side hustle to a full-time six-figure art business with weekly trainings that include step-by-step proven art business techniques plus painting tutorials from yours truly and other guest artists who are masters in their field you will be well equipped to learn and grow into the highly skilled and highly profitable artist you know you're meant to be. I've figured out what it takes to build my own six-figure art business, and now my heart is set on teaching aspiring artists like you to do the same. It's not hard, but it does require your time and dedication. So if you're up for the challenge, go to advancedmember.com. That's advancedmember.com to learn more. If you've enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. If you review our podcast and send a screenshot of that review to me on Instagram, I am at art by Andrea Earhart. I will then promote your art on my story and tag you as a little thank you for helping me grow this podcast and our Artist Academy community. I have a reach of over 50,000 on Instagram. So this is a little help me to help you in the center. Also, if you ever want your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests, then just hop on over to facebook.com slash groups slash artist academy to check out the schedule every Tuesday to catch us on live. I'll see you next week.